How does COVID-19 attack our bodies? Let's ask an expert. Hi kids, I'm David Lane. I'm a scientist who works in Singapore and I'm working for the government and we're all working very hard to try and control and understand this virus epidemic. Hello, my name is Olivia Chong and I am seven years old. Why is COVID-19 killing a lot of people? Hello, I'm Elisha and I'm seven. I want to know how the COVID-19 can travel through the body and attack other cells. I am Elisha and I am five years old. I want to know how does the COVID-19 got bite on the boy? It's a lot of good questions. Luckily, I can answer them all for you. So the virus is like a little ball, tiny little ball, and it comes into your body and it wants to make more of itself. So to do that, it goes inside something we call a cell. And our bodies are made up of millions of cells. And these cells are incredibly clever and um, they're full of good stuff for the virus. So when the virus goes inside, it kind of kidnaps the cell and turns it into a factory that makes more of itself. And then it spits out all this virus and now it can go and infect other cells so it spreads through our body from cell to cell and that's what causes the trouble on the surface of these balls are those spike spiky things those and they're kind of sticky they are sticky pads if you like and so they help the virus to infect the next cell so you can imagine what goes on it makes more of these balls and then they spread all around now for the ball to get inside the cell it needs to find the like the answer to the sticky pad something for the sticky pad to stick to and it's only able to infect cells that have that particular uh, binding site, as we call it, or sticky pad. And the one is called ACE2. So the virus comes into your body, usually by you breathing in the virus in a little water droplet from somebody who unfortunately <coughs> sneezed or coughed near you. And then it goes into your body and it finds the sticky pad. And then the ball go inside the cell and it makes more and more of itself. Now, most of the time, for most of us, that's not nice, but it doesn't really cause that much trouble. We might get a little bit of a cough, or we might be a little bit unwell, but not bad. But for some people, <coughs> it gets worse and worse. The infection spreads more, and we have cells with the right sticky pad that can become factories for virus in a, right down in the bottom of our lungs, as well as in our mouth and in our throat. So when it gets there, <coughs> then you have trouble, because you now filling up with virus where you should be getting oxygen from the air to breathe and keep you happy and well. So you start to feel breathless. Then the other thing that happens is that your immune system is very, very busy. This is the system we have in our bodies that fights infections. We call it the immune system. And it's full of very clever things that can help us not get viruses. But this virus gets it too excited. It says, wow, this is a pretty dangerous virus. And it starts to make too much stuff. And then this causes something we call inflammation. But what that means is your body gets very, very busy making molecules that make it very excited. And these in the end can cause big problems. They can cause problems in your kidneys. They can cause problems elsewhere. So that's when the virus gets really dangerous. Those, those two things gets in your lungs right deep down, stops you breathing properly. And then it sends out all these crazy alarm signals. Your whole body goes, wow, what's happening? And that also can be a big problem. So that's how it all works. It's a nasty little ball that can copy itself very, very fast in your cells in your body if it finds the right sticky pad. I'm Hayley and I'm six years old. How do you know you got the virus? So one of the big questions we have to ask ourselves, how would I know if I've got the virus or you've got it? What can we do? So the problem is we, it's not easy. We can uh, have people who don't feel very ill and they have the virus. So at one level, the question is, you know, scientifically, how can we tell if you've got the virus? So the way we can do that is to take a little bit of fluid from inside our, our nose or our mouth, and then they can look in that fluid for the virus using a very, very sensitive test. But if we're not tested in that way, then the only way we can know if we've got the virus really is kind of how we feel ill. You can ask, what kind of feeling ill do I have? How do I feel ill? And is that the type of feeling ill that comes from this virus? So, so we call that the symptoms of the virus. What are the symptoms? What are the type of feeling ill I get when I get this virus? So what do you get? You get a temperature, you get a fever. So you feel too hot and sweaty, and you might start <coughs> coughing like that, a dry cough. 
And those are the two, two main symptoms. Now, I mean, fortunately for children, they don't seem to have much trouble with this virus. So in Singapore, only 57 children have been reported to have the virus at all, ever. And 42 of those have completely recovered. None of the children have had to go into the big dangerous part of the hospital, the ICU. So surprisingly, this is one of the things where it's good for ch to be a child. Now, that doesn't mean to say you should go crazy because we think you can still spread it to others. So it's very important that you behave responsibly like everybody else is doing around you and, and keep your distance. And um, for people like me, a little bit older than you, then I have to be very careful not to get this virus. So we really need to work hard to get rid of it. That's the end of this episode of Ask an Expert. The next one's going to be really exciting too. There you'll learn more about this type of virus called coronaviruses and the different sorts of virus there are and why some seem to be much worse than others. Some just give us a cold, some are very dangerous. And then we'll learn what a really pandemic is and why we call it that. What does it mean? And that's a big word and how do we understand what it is? Mm -hmm.